Welcome to True Health Tuesdays. Now, today is going to be a little bit different, okay, because this time, this talk, it's personal. Now, we're talking about medically induced versus chiropractic strokes. Now, this is important because if you've ever heard the urban legend, it's kind of like flashing your lights on the freeway, a gang member's going to shoot you. Well, let, let's look into this first. Okay, now, strokes are vital, and I'm talking about mainly strokes from the brain. Now, it's affecting 33 million worldwide. You're talking the fourth leading cause of death in America. Affects, in fact, one out of 20 deaths, is it? And it's a leading cause of disability. Now, uh, figure when we look at this, there's two different types of strokes. Now, one type is that, that the blood vessels actually burst, okay, and that's called a hemorrhagic stroke. stroke. The other type of stroke is called um, a thrombotic stroke, and, and you may have heard that blood clots form. Okay, blood doesn't clot in the arteries, blood does clump in the arteries, and the, the, the distinction is vital there. Because when we look at this, this is healthy red blood cells. And the red blood cells figure it's a biconcave disc, and it's supposed to hold oxygen on both sides. If the blood cells get sticky, and they get sticky because of inappropriate digestion. So what that means is sticky blood could be from antacids, such as Tums, Rolaids, Little Purple Pill. It can also get, so get sticky from a diet high in polyunsaturated fats. So that means someone taking corn oil, canola oil, soy oil, okay, and that's virtually every packaged foods. What happens is those polyunsaturated fats cause it to get sticky, and that's called rouleau coin formation. So guess what happens, okay, if you have toxic blood, okay, and this is going to mean um, a poor diet high in polyunsaturated fats. We're talking... Um, uh, diet high in medications because that's also going to cause the blood cells to get sticky and if they do guess what has to happen to the pressure in order to have that sticky thick blood go through the system yes it elevates it so you can see that the thrombotic stroke isn't really um, from blood clots or here's the biggest misnomer out there High blood pressure causes strokes. No, it doesn't. If high blood pressure caused strokes, they'd be shutting down gyms. They'd be telling you to back away from the stair stepper. Okay, so none of that stuff is true. What's actually true is the body is going to elevate blood pressure in order to adapt to a toxic defective circumstance. Now, let's look at blood tests. When they're testing your blood for cholesterol, blood sugar, for everything, are they taking that blood out of the arteries or veins? They're taking it out of the veins. So here's an interesting thing. If they're measuring cholesterol in the veins, why, is, why doesn't cholesterol clog the veins? Why does it clog the arteries? In fact, if it clogs arteries, why doesn't it clog the small ones? So if the, the theory that cholesterol actually clogs arteries is true, um, we'd be walking around with ble black fingers and toes because it's literally clogging the small ones. And none of that is true. So what actually happens, we've got to look at the structure of arteries. See, an artery has three different layers. The outer layer, okay, has a blood supply and that's tunica externa. The tunica media, the middle layer, is the muscle layer. Now this is important because veins don't have a muscle layer. And I want you to look at this because this is vitally important when we look at a normal artery is like this. If we open up that artery, pressure goes down. If we constrict the artery, pressure goes up. So it's just like putting your thumb over a fire hose, okay, that goes up and you let it open, it goes down. So that means arteries are going to constrict or dilate depending on the need. Now, if there's anything in your diet that damages the arteries, okay, there's an inner lining called endothelium. Now, now this tunica in, intima, this lining on the inside, placking forms between that and the lumen, or the area where the blood flows.
So if there's any damage to the artery, the body is going to lay down a protective coating of calcium, fibrin, and cholesterol in order to protect the wall of the artery. So this is actually an intelligent response. But you can see here that instead of healthy, free-flowing blood, there's going to be less of an opening. So if you have multiple arteries that are damaging, or let's say we have atherosclerosis or sclerotic pack, or the arteries aren't as flexible as they used to be, guess what has to happen to blood pressure in order to adapt to the heart in the arteries? Yes, it has to go up. We've known this for decades, okay? That older people or people who have been exposed to a lot of toxins, the first number that, you know, blood pressure is measured, um, systolic over diastolic, there's always a bigger number over a little number, uh, typically 120 over 80 or in the ballpark there. Well, the first number typically goes higher because you need larger output okay, of the heart in order to maintain a normal healthy blood pressure. So lots of sclerotic placking inside of the arteries is going to raise systolic. So again, blood pressure elevates or adapts to a toxic defective circumstance. So this is vital when you look at it. Now also, what weakens blood vessels? I mean, everyone's been in the supermarket before and you've been behind the guy in the market with big bruises here and there. And you can say, wow, you know, he's either on blood thinners or aspirin therapy. Well, if you have bruises that are forming on your arm, that's weakened blood vessels. Okay, that means that just even the minor trauma is going to burst them. Do you think that might weaken the blood vessels inside of the brain? Yes or yes? Absolutely. It's like a no-brainer. Okay, so people taking aspirin and blood thinners are also going to elevate it. So what we're going to discuss today, and I want you to understand the two different types of stroke. Thrombotic, okay, which means that the blood is blocked, okay, or hemorrhagic where the blood vessels burst. Now this is important because if you're taking a drug, and this is how high blood pressure medications actually can cause a stroke, See, you take a drug to lower your blood pressure. Blood pressure gets so low that you start to pass out almost. This is why multiple studies show that when seniors start taking uh, blood pressure dr medications, there's an increase in falls, an increase in head traumas, increase in hip fractures, all because their brain doesn't get enough oxygen, so the body kicks out the legs so the head goes level with the ground. So when we look at this, what happens is the body under low blood pressure is going to constrict the blood vessels in order to raise the pressure. Does, does that make sense? Okay, yeah, it does. So when you look at it, if we have an opening that's starting to close and the blood pressure goes down too low and the artery naturally constricts, if there is a blockage in there, it's going to temporarily shut off the blood pressure or the blood flow and that's going to limit the oxygen of the tissue. Does that make sense? Okay, good. So, this drove me crazy. Now, now there's things that are misleading out of ignorance, and then there's criminally misleading. I'm going to bring up a patient that um, is going to die, and he's going to die bad because of bad advice. Now, this was an article that came out August 7th from the American Heart Association by an absolute ignorant neurologist. Now this guy either has no clue of physiology or he is purposely misleading patients into a world of drug therapies that are toxic and ineffective. This man needs to be arrested. Um, I'm not even calling him Dr. Jose Biller. Okay, he's a author, professor, chair of neurology. I don't know how he got that because obviously if he knew anything about neurology, he would want his patients to go see a chiropractor. But this is his quote. Neck manipulation may be associated with stroke. Now, when you read further in this, and, and now this is important, treatments involving neck manipulation may be associated with stroke, though it cannot be said with certainty that neck manipulations cause a stroke, according to a new scientific statement. Scientific statement published in the American Heart Association's Journal of Stroke. What is a scientific statement? Where's the facts? Where's the supporting data? Where's the documentation? So, so now I'm going to look at it. Okay. 
chiropractic care may be associated with stroke. Let's look at the facts because the, the research that I'm aware of is the exact opposite. It actually is beneficial. So, so let's look into the facts. This is actually, though, when you see the facts, it's criminally misleading. It's like it's tantamount to standing in the middle of a crowded theater shouting fire. This is stuff that, that we've got to stop. And this is why. A patient comes in, 67-year-old Viet, or, or yeah, 69-year-old Vietnam vet. And he's sitting there like this, okay, doing, during the whole report. And I said, well, you know, this is the problem. You've got a reversal of the curve in the neck. Uh, you've been on blood pressure medications for 10 years. You've been on cholesterol medications for 10 years. This is the side view of his low back, and you can see this tube coming down there. That's a sclerotic placking on the descending aorta. You shouldn't see that on x-ray. So this means his arteries are hardening. So what does that have to do? What does the body do if you have hardening arteries? Oh, that's right. It has to elevate the pressure. Okay, good. So, so when you look at that reverse curve, hardening of the arteries, massive pressure up there. He's beginning cardiac arrhythmias, and what does he say to me? I'm not going to let you touch my neck until I talk to my cardiologist. And I'm going, well, your cardiologist has no idea at what um, a chiropractic does. He has no experience in chiropractic. My cardiologist knows. What the heck does he know? So this ignorant, and he actually mentioned the article, this, this incredibly ridiculous article. He mentioned it. And I'm going, my God, this man, the only person, the only profession that can help him, that can restore that curve in the neck, that can give this man his life back, okay, is to get his neck adjusted. And out of fear and ignorance, he stopped. This man is going to die. He's going to die badly because he's taken medications that not only increase his risk of stroke, but it causes dementia. It causes weakening of the immune system. That's the cholesterol drugs. It's this time it's personal. If you're going to give advice and you're a doctor and it's going to cause that much harm, enough is enough. The line is drawn here. Okay, doctors have got to get educated on the tox toxicity of the therapies. But now let's look into some facts. Here's a, now this is a real professor. Okay, Frank Silver, Dr. Frank Silver, professor of medicine at the University of Toronto, New York Stroke Program. He said, we didn't see any increased association between chiropractic care and the usual family physician care and stroke. No correlation. None whatsoever. Okay, then you start, I start looking into it and I think, well, wait a second. Spinal lipid therapies, there's typically one in about 5.8 million occurrences. And I think that's, that's let's, let's put this in perspective. That's about one in every 48 careers. It turns out that non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, if you take that, okay, it's 1,500 times greater taking an Advil, Motrin, Aleve, Naperson, okay, as opposed to getting your neck adjusted. 1,500 times greater. Now, this is, when I'm looking at these facts, I'm thinking of how many pain relievers this guy has been prescribed. I'm thinking of how many um, toxic drugs that he's been taking. So when we look at this, getting struck by lightning, it's one in 600. Now this is per year. You have a one in 600,000 chance of getting struck by lightning per year. I just heard from a patient that he says, Doc, I got the figure wrong. Over your lifetime, it's one in 3,000 but get, getting struck by lightning. So you have, if you just take per year, you have about a thousand times greater chance of getting struck by lightning than injured by a chiropractor. But let's look into this more. Now what these medical doctors are talking about is a rare type of stroke called a vertebral artery dissection. And what that means is is that inside of the artery that f there's a flap of skin okay that closes off the lumen or there's a blockage of um, of pathway of the blood okay from a torsion of it and now when you look up it turns out it's about two percent of all the strokes and what predisposes these people to get it and I start looking at it and migraines high blood pressure now remember high blood pressure is not a disease 
This means the body is giving high blood pressure to adapt to a toxic defective circumstance. So when you see high blood pressure, and this is for all doctors, if you see high blood pressure, that's not a defective human. That's a body adapting to toxic deficient lifestyle. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So when we look at this, high blood pressure, that's not high blood pressure, that's a toxic defective circumstance or clogged arteries that this person is trying to bypass. So his body is giving them the red flash and light already. Smokers, of course, that constricts the blood vessels. Oral contraceptives, direct trauma, and non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. Again, we're seeing that. We're seeing that non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, a very common over-the-counter drug that's prescribed by most everybody, is one of the leading causes of arterial damage causing this type of stroke. Now, let's put it in perspective, okay? And this is phenomenally important. A person just walking along, okay, standard person, no diagnosis of anything. They have the standard diet. They're not taking particularly good care of their health. They're not seeing a chiropractor. Uh, you have a general population two every 100,000. So two people for every 100,000 people just has a stroke. If you happen to be a, um, under chiropractic care, you have about a one in 5.8 million chance, or we're looking at this, has you have a 0 0.00000017 chance of having a stroke. If you don't get your neck adjusted, you have a 0 0.00002 chance. So you have a thousand times greater risk of getting a stroke if you don't get your neck adjusted than if you do. Now let's look at that, let's look at that because Let's say if you have an adjustment, what does that do? That restores normal form and function. That restores fluid and nutrients. It can reverse arthritis. It restores normal sensory input into the brain. Since the neck curve is called the arc of life, we're all ta also talking the cardiac and respiratory center is at the base of the brain. We're talking the phrenic nerve, the nerve that supplies the diaphragm is at the base of the neck. All the nerves that supply the brachial plexus comes out of the neck. So we have all of these structures that are absolutely vital. And what does a chiropractor do? It maintains the integrity of those structures and can reverse degeneration and arthritis. So it helps it keep more mobile and healthy. Well, that does make sense. So here's the ignorant doctor saying, oh, don't touch your neck. Okay, not only is that ridiculous, it's increasing his rate of stroke. What if you get a doctor that says, don't touch the neck and here, take this ibuprofen? That guy needs to either lose his license or go back to school and get educated. Then you look at this, risk for lumbar surgery, death rate is seven per 10,000. What do chiropractors do? We stop people from having the need for surgery. I mean, it's needed sometimes. Honest to goodness. In nearly 18 years of practice, I've referred four people. Okay, that's out of about 30,000 patients. So it's necessary sometimes. Look, a two-month course of non anti-inflammatories. Risk of death is one in 1,200. Risk of death, okay? And death rate for acetaminophen, the main ingredient in Tylenol, is one person is killed for every two million tablets sold. Deadliest drug in America. So, and here's a study by Dr. Anthony Rosner um, comparing medical procedures to chiropractic care. He used a bizarre rate of one in a million um, people getting injured by a chiropractor just to keep it fair. Okay. You have a hundred times greater risk of dying from general anesthesia. If you get one unit of blood transfused into you, um, you have a two times greater risk of dying. You have a 400 times greater risk of dying from non anti-inflammatories, 700 times greater risk of dying from lumbar surgery, uh, say an average of around 5,000 greater risk of dying from gallbladder surgery, and a 10,000 times greater rate of dying from mistakes in a hospital. So let's keep it in perspective. So, so remember that article? Yeah. How many patients are able to avoid death and injury by avoiding medical and surgical intervention through chiropractic care? Chiropractic care is the number one thing that you should go to, number one therapy you should go to, number one health care that you should go to in order to prevent a stroke. Now, um, this is 
an article that was published in the Journal of Spine, which uh, what's frustrating about this is it's always um, like a retractor. So they're always going to print something ridiculous, like the stupid scientific statement, okay, by that ignorant neurologist. Okay, then a couple of months goes by, then they print a retraction. Okay, this is kind of the retraction, kind of, okay. Risk of traumatic injury associated with chiropractic spinal manipulation of Medicare Part B beneficiaries age 66 to 99. Yeah, so I read this and I'm going, what? The title of the article doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Then I read the summary, and the summary is, risk of physical injury due to spinal manipulation has not been rigorously evaluated for older adults in a population particularly vulnerable to traumatic injury in general. And I'm going, not, that doesn't make any sense. Rigorously evaluated? Have they not been aware of the Journal of Manipulative Physiologic Therapeutics, the journal of, even their own journal, I'm, the Journal of Spine? We're looking at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of articles on senior population and their effect of getting adjusted. So, and now this study, get this study. It's only involved in checking seniors with neuromuscular complaints and the evaluation Okay, so you go to a medical doctor for an evaluation and remote muscle complaint. I don't know what they do. I know their therapies. It's shots, drugs, or referring for a PT, physical therapy. So, so I know what the therapies are, but what's the evaluation? I don't know. Do they say, hey, look, let me see how your shoulder bends or something? Well, you know, let's check into it. So this is what it should actually read. This is what the um, title of the article should be. It should say risk of traumatic injury associated with medical evaluations, okay, in Medicare Part B beneficiaries age 66 to 99. Again, how many patients avoid surgery from it? Now, this is the results of the article, okay? When you look at this, um, you had a 76% lower chance of getting injured by a chiropractor than by going to a medical doctor. Now, those are percentages. Let's look at the actual numbers. Uh, for going to a chiropractor, and this is, these are people with acute neuromuscular skeletal problems or chronic. Um, for every 100,000 people, 40 are injured. In a primary care, 153 are injured. So we're talking almost four times as many, almost four times as many. Now, what the study didn't take into account, remember, what's the, what's the therapy for a neuromuscular um, uh, problem that a medical doctor is going to do? We're talking drugs, surgery, or shots, okay, maybe physical therapy. Um, you might get some enlightened medical doctors that are aware that chiropractic can actually restore normal form and function, so those guys might refer someone, okay, so we're talking a very rare fifth option, but it's possible, okay, anyone watching this medical doctor that wants to get educated on health We'll, we'll do that. So what this really means is that if you have a neuromusculoskeletal complaint and you go to a medical doctor, you have a, almost a 400% increased risk of injury as opposed to going to a chiropractor. No, say it with me. Wow! Why isn't this more known? So I'm looking for causes of stroke, and I go in there, and you know how, you know how late night TV, how they say, um, you know, uh, if you've had um, uh, this drug in the past, you know, and your child developed breast and he's not happy with them, call Jacobson, 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 and join our lawsuit. Okay, you've heard those late night? I mean, everybody has. Well, so I type it in and I see, oh my gosh, Enbrel. I mean, that's, that's for like autoimmune disorders. And sure enough, you look into it and you think, well, wait a second. These arterial dissections. So did these drugs cause that? And then I look and I look at the different conditions that they were having. And of course, high blood pressure, constipation, insomnia, rheumatoid, but also the other drugs that they're taking. When you look at it, you're looking at blood pressure drugs, steroid drugs, antidepressants, and, and you think, oh my gosh this drug cocktail. Remember, <clears throat> what are the two types of strokes? Weak blood vessels or toxic blood. What do drugs do? They cause the blood to not actually be healthy. Okay, it's actually poisons because the drugs, they're only going to do one of, one of two things. They're either going to poison an enzyme or block a receptor site on a cell and that's why they're called patent medicine. 
So then I look up and here we go, another one, Humira. And I'm, and I'm going, oh my gosh, this is another one for autoimmune disorders. Another one out of the 135,000 people who had negative side effects, um, or actually who reported them, okay, because you know there's probably more than that, four of them had an arterial dissection. And look at what they, they're taking, birth control, high blood pressure, multiple sclerosis, stress, anxiety. Absolutely, this stuff is dangerous. So let's put this in comparison. Okay, now when we talk about per million, okay, and these are death rates per million. Uh, chiropractic, we already know 0.0000001. Okay, canoeing, three per 100 million. And then you start looking, venous puncture, a nuclear bone scan, just a bone scan itself, 333 per million die. Okay, we look at it, bleeding, gastrointestinal bleeding due to non steroidal anti-inflammatories, 400 per million die. Okay, then we look at this, um, spinal surgery, appendectomies, cigarettes. Then we look here, and this is what the medical system is talking about. And what's frustrating is when you go to a medical doctor and you say, well, what's the risk? What's the risk of disrupting circulation? This is what's the risk? What activities disrupt the flow of blood from the body up to the brain? Well, let's look at it. Um, actual traction, coughing, oh, don't cough. Dental procedures, don't ever go to the dentist. Gymnastics, hanging out the washing, why? Because you're going back like this, lifting up so you're compressing. Yeah, you don't want to do that if you're not healthy. Um, yawn Yawning. Uh-oh, did I just disrupt somebody's cerebral cir circulation? Okay, just checking, don't yawn. Okay, and, and then, okay, of course, I, mean, I know this is crazy, this is gonna sound crazy, but this is the medical world. Cerebral vascular accidents. This is, this is where the blood vessels either get, get clogged or they break. Okay, what kind of activities are associated with it? And you know this, if you've been to the standard medical evaluation and you've had some type of problem, they're gonna say, well, avoid going to the beauty parlor because going back in the sink is not healthy. Archery is not healthy. For God's sake, don't turn your head while driving. Don't even think about yoga. What they do is they're instilling fear. They're saying, oh my God, I can't turn my head, otherwise I might have a cerebral vascular accident. Does that sound stupid or stupid? Okay, let's actually go over the real cause of this. If your joints are normal, healthy, and mobile, you don't have a negative response. <clears throat> Lori. Uh, now, when we look at this, these are actually the, 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 when you're looking at the probability of stroke or serious event, I start doing more research. I start trying to, try to find out Okay, what, what data do we have? So when we look at the National College, okay, and that's a chiropractic college, out of five million, okay, chiropractic adjustments over a 15 year period, zero complications. Uh, Canadian Memorial, um, out of five million adjustments over a nine year period, zero complications. Out of a RAND study, you're talking 0.64 per every million. I mean, when we look at this, it's just, it's so infinitesimal that the injury, okay, could occur. So, so now, can, can you see how I was, my, my patient is getting absolute horrible advice and he's going to die early because of that. And here's a 2000 to 2010 tax force talking about neck pain and its associated disorders. No increased risk related to chiropractic treatment. Researchers found that patients are no more likely to suffer a stroke following a visit to a chiropractor than they would after stepping into their family doctor's office. It's that, that important. Okay, so, I mean, it, it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, we know um, this, this one, American leading cause of death is the medical system. And we know this, okay? We know that if you're drugging a symptom, okay, and you're using a medication or therapy, it, long term it's toxic. It's not, not a good outcome. Here's a patient, okay? Now, I, I named him Robert. He's a 61 year old male. He had a stroke before coming into chiropractic, but before chiropractic, he was under medical care. And what did he have? 
He had high blood pressure. He was taking it for 15 years. He was taking cholesterol meds for 10 years. And when you look at this, what was his body telling the doctor for 15 years that the blood was not healthy or that there was something clogging it? Can you see what high blood pressure is? It's a clue that the blood is not healthy or that there's being a clog. There's not being an effective um, flow. Now, luckily, and here he is, he had a, a stroke on the left hemisphere where he's got a right flexor contracture and an extension of the leg. So he's walking like this. Over the last, well, when he first started with us, so it took us about six months, he can now go upstairs. He still walks like this. Okay, we're still slowly regenerating his brain. But again, what was the cause of the stroke? It wasn't bad luck or bad genes. By God, this man was being poisoned with blood pressure and cholesterol medications for 15 and 10 years. Okay, it was just bad care. We've got to watch the healthcare. We've got to watch the system. I mean, did you know cholesterol and lower medications increase stroke? It turns out that a cholesterol and drug, remember the two different types of stroke, thrombotic and hemorrhagic? Statin drugs, cholesterol drugs, increase the risk of hemorrhagic stroke. Now, why would that be? Because, I mean, cholesterol drugs decrease cholesterol. Cholesterol is the building product of most of the hormones you make. And you need hormones such as um, the cholesterol in order to build cortisol, testosterone, progesterone. I mean, these are vital for physiology. So why would you want to reduce that? I'll tell you why. Pfizer, 11 billion a year. AstraZeneca, 5 billion a year. Now that's 16 billion a year for this drug. But now, how much is that in real numbers? 16 for the drug, 16 billion for the drug. How many office visits for the doctor to prescribe it? How many follow-up office visits? How many lab tests to see if it's damaging your liver that they got to do every 90 days, okay? So this isn't just one drug one time. By God, this is getting people hooked on this stuff for years, for years. It's criminal, criminally misleading. Um, cholesterol drugs, this is the American Journal of Cardiology. They don't clean the arteries. And remember, look at this artery here. Look at that artery. Think of that. If you've got a clogged artery, you need to clean the arteries because if that person goes under stress or is taking a blood pressure medication and it closes to raise the blood pressure, that, which is a normal body response, you can temporarily alter flow. British Medical Journal. If you're taking a chemical to lower your blood sugar, what happens? If you lower your blood, remember, we're talking diabetes type 2. 95% of all diabetics are type 2 diabetes. It takes about 5 to 7 days to get off the drugs. It takes around 30 to 45 days to heal type 2 diabetes. Okay, because if you take a drug to lower blood sugar, the sugar goes down. Insulin levels remain high. So if you lower blood sugar 9%, you increase death by 19%. If you lower blood sugar by 14%, you increase death by 43%. Using a chemical to alter physiology is not an intelligent way to treat human beings. When you look at the stents, this is, I mean, incredibly insane. Remember, your skin is reproduced every 28 days. Your blood is brand new every 120 days. The um, what they'll do is, if they see a clogged artery, they go in, they can do a balloon, which is an angioplasty. Now, that's not cleaning the artery, it's just expanding the artery. Or they can put a wire cage in there, and this is called a stent. Now, what's interesting is, do you think out of the entire body there's just one little clog, or do you think all the arteries are clogged? Yeah, that's right, all the arteries. So, when we look at this, it's foolish to just open up one artery. Plus, what they came up with, they found out that you put a wire cage in there, blood cells can collect on it, it can form a thrombus or a blood clot or a blood clump. Then they came out with medicated stents. I don't know if you've, if you like, just sitting around doing nothing. Type in lawsuit medicated stents. Yeah, that'll be awakening. It's kind of cool, because in the next few years, what they're doing, they're doing a thing called stent retrieval where they're actually getting a wire in there and removing the stents, which is going to be phenomenal in the future. And we are going to talk about heart attacks next month. So you're going to find out that heart attacks don't come from lack of blood flow. They actually come from an altered nerve supply. 
angiograms. This is how they decide if they're going to put a stent in there. Okay, it turns out they're inaccurate 78% of the time. The same test read by the same observer was right only a third of the time. I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense. Bypass surgeries. This means by going over an artery that they think is clogged, it turns out it's not effective. Now, I love this. This is out of the Journal of the American Medical Association. How many operations were unnecessary? They say by over half. It, see, if you drug someone to change their physiology, and that's considered medical care, the outcome is not good. This patient here, what you're looking at, this is a machine called a pacemaker. It's shoved in. You'll see wires there. Those wires mean that this man had his sternum opened up, okay, and then they did a bypass operation, then they closed it up. Now, they decided to do a pacemaker. Now, what this is, it's a machine put in underneath the chest on the left, a wire that goes through the arteries, or actually through the veins, through the, and you got the heart with the right ventricle, right atrium, this wire goes through the right atrium, through the tricuspid valve, jammed into the floor of the right ventricle with this little trident spear. And then the heart has to close around this wire the rest of the person's life. Now, this guy was going through a battery about every 90 days. Now, what's interesting is the nerve supply to the heart is the top of the thorax. So his pacemaker was used and used and used and used. It was, it was wearing out the battery. So he comes in here and we go in, we take pressure off of that area, all of a sudden the batteries are lasting a year and a half, two years, he's not utilizing it anymore. So we've got a profession that's smart enough to knock this guy out, put a machine underneath here, drive a, 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 a spear point into the right ventricle and have the heart close around it, but they're ignorant, so ignorant that they're not going to look at the natural nerve supply to the, to the heart to make sure he's not in a sympathetic dominant state. Now, this is why the neck is so important to have it mobile and healthy to prevent stroke. This is normal. A reversal of the curve is going to compress the cardiac and respiratory center. It can actually kill the patient. Okay, any time you have compression up there can cause an alteration in oxygen and blood flow to the brain. This is beyond vital. And yes, these patients actually develop depression and bipolar disorder. Why? Because of a chronic, chronic sympathetic state or fight or flight system. Now, this is vital to correct and avoid any type of stroke. What you need, you need phytonutrients. Now, we don't know why a blueberry is blue. We don't know why um, a red bell pepper is red. But we knew, do know that those plants and fruits have developed that coloring and flavors and textures because they've been exposed to funguses, viruses, and bacteria, and they've developed resistance to those. Now, these are called phytonutrients, okay? And we know that if we take those plant products in, our body gets the benefit of those eons of adapting to bacteria and funguses and viruses. Those plants have survived. So a diet rich in colored fruits and vegetables, phytonutrients, actually can clean the artery. This is why juicing and blending is so vital. Juicing actually pre-digest the food. Figure in a juicer, you have plants that go in here and separate the heavy fibers or soluble fi or insoluble fibers from the th lighter fibers or insoluble fibers. The soluble fibers literally clean the arteries. Yes, if you have a clogged artery, you can clean it. Yes, that patient I told you about at the beginning that showed that hardening of the arteries, the arteries can actually be healed if they get healthy soluble fibers. So it's not a permanent life thing. If you've been diagnosed with atherosclerosis, fix it, for goodness sake. Get some juicing and blending. We already know, Annals of Internal Medicine, Journal of Epidemiology. Just one serving of fresh fruits a day reduce your risk of heart attack. Uh, this right here. <clears throat> I named him Calvin just because it's not really his name, but Calvin's my brother and I love the guy. Okay. But here, high blood pressure meds, high cholesterol meds, non steroidal anti-inflammatory. So what do we know about that? All three of those meds increase in his risk of stroke. This is what he looks like when he first came in. Yes, cardiac arrhythmias. Yes, numbness and tingling on the hand. The trip is he didn't come in for that. 
He came in because he hurt his knees. He was going in for a knee replacement. He heard that we were good at fixing knees. I said, buddy, we'll be able to fix the knees, but by God, we're going to help with the high blood pressure. You're going to see this. 90 days later, that's him. 90 days later. The body is intelligent. It gives symptoms for a reason. This is what you require to eliminate any type of stroke. You absolutely, absolutely need to get your nervous system checked. Why? Because you live your life through your nervous system. You absolutely need regular exercise. This means at least a half hour a day of walking just to help lymph flow, just to help oxygen. You absolutely need proper nutrition. This means if man makes it, you don't eat it. Okay, this means a plant-based diet, organic plant foods. This right here, you need sufficient rest. This means deep sleep every night without the TV on. This gets the REM state of sleep and absolutely prayer and meditation because if you have a relationship with the being that created you, to, to, to identify with a power that's greater than yourself, every study shows that it helps with cell production. Absolutely every cell. Every study I've seen. Now, all of these slides, all of this information is available at the Owner's Guide for free for everyone on YouTube um, for seven days. For our patients, you get it as long as you're our patient. And, and use the information, share it. Because the criminally misleading information that's out there is, is literally costing lives. And only the truth will set you free. Yes, I know. That's Charlton Heston. Thank you very much. <laughs>